of the 1930s and into the early months of the 1940s. Comic books, with all new material to read, was still new. Yet despite this, the comic book was on the fast track to becoming forever ingrained into American culture. And as a result of that, the entertainment medium called comic books would reintroduce one of the earliest forms of cross-media advertisement in the world of publishing. Just like pulp magazine publishers and radio drama producers had done in the past, the comic book companies of the 1940s would publish books based on radio shows. Shows like Gangbusters, Ozzy and Harriet, Mr. District Attorney, and Hop Harrigan. And even more books were published, these based on popular motion picture stars, such as Alan Ladd, Dale Evans, John Wayne, and Bella Lugosi. Also, books based on movie characters, like Nyoka, the Jungle Girl, Mutt and Jeff, and once again, Hop Harrigan. But the books themselves were not the only form of cross-media advertising. There was also a few house ads in those now vintage books that would promote another media-based book, radio show, or motion picture. The early 1950s saw no slowdown in the expansion of the publishing market. With a larger variety of comic books based on motion picture stars and various animated characters filling the newsstands and the comic book racks in corner stores, comic book publishers continued with this format throughout most of the decade. However, toward the mid-1950s, something new was added to the mix. Comic books based on television shows and the first TV show advertisement to be placed in a comic book was also introduced during this period. The 1960s saw the continued publication of TV-inspired comic books. Yet, as in the 40s and 50s, the advertisements were not so easily found. But in the mid-1960s, Saturday morning TV for children exploded with dozens of new shows and TV ads and comics were now an annual event that continues to this day. This April 1966 comic book ad is probably the first to advertise more than one TV station, more than one TV show, more than one TV broadcast schedule, and a Broadway musical, all in one single page ad. ABC placed their live action Batman show on Wednesday and Thursday nights. Reruns of the live action show The Adventures of Superman were in syndication and received no station notice. The CBS filmation cartoons the New Adventures of Superman and The Adventures of Superboy were probably the first ads for Saturday cartoons. The Broadway show It's a Bird, It's a Plane, It's Superman, starring Jack Cassidy, was a bit of a hit in its day. Only two of the five animated shows listed at the bottom of the ad were ever produced, The Flash and Aquaman. This was probably the first ad for the syndicated reruns of The Adventures of Superman. The ad for The Batman Show could be the first to advertise the now famous Camp TV show. Another 1966 TV comic ad, this one for September. This CBS ad may have been the very first two-page ad for Saturday morning children's programming and may have also served as the prototype for decades of ads that follow. This season's stars started off your day with Captain Kangaroo at 8 a.m., Mighty Mouse Playhouse at 9 a.m., Underdog followed at 9.30, Frankenstein Jr. and the Impossibles at 10 a.m., 
Space Ghost and Dino Boy at 10.30, Superman and Superboy at 11 a.m., The Lone Ranger and Tonno at 11.30, Roadrunner at 12 noon, The Beagles at 12.30 p.m., and Tom and Jerry at 1 o'clock. Superman was the first venture into animated children's shows by the folks at Filmation. Space Ghost, Frankenstein Jr., The Impossibles, and Dino Boy were shows by a group of people who had been animating television shows since 1957. Hanna-Barbera Studios. This comic book TV ad announces the arrival of the first Marvel Comics cartoons to television. It even has one of the first TV station listings to be placed in an ad. The ad background simulates a TV screen for the characters to emerge from. Here is another ad for Marvel Comics TV cartoons. This one improves on the illusion of the heroes bursting from your television screen, and it comes complete with its own station identification. In 1966, these multicolored banner ads appeared at the bottom of every sixth to eighth page in almost every single Marvel comic book published in that year. And the last ad for 1966 is for the reruns of the 1950s live-action show, The Adventures of Superman. And it very well could be the second ad to promote the syndicated reruns of that program. Kicking off the 1967 season, CBS served up a superhero Saturday bonanza, starting off your morning with... Captain Kangaroo at 8 a.m., followed by Frankenstein Jr. and the Impossibles at 9 a.m., the Herculoids at 9.30, Shazam at 10 a.m., Space Ghost at 10.30, Moby Dick and the Mighty Mitor at 11 a.m. Next, the Superman Aquaman Hour of Adventure at 11.30. Johnny Quest at 12.30, The Lone Ranger and Tonto at 1 p.m., and ending out your morning is The Roadrunner at 1.30. This 1967 comic book TV ad has your ABC Saturday morning lineup, starting with Casper, the Friendly Ghost at 9 a.m., The Fantastic Four at 9.30, followed by Spider-Man at 10 a.m., Journey to the Center of the Earth at 10.30, next, King Kong at 11 a.m., George of the Jungle at 11.30, The Fab Four, The Beatles at 12 noon, and America's oldest teenager, Dick Clark, and American Bandstand at 12.30. ABC TV actually published their own comic book in order to promote their new Saturday lineup of shows. This Marvel Comics editorial column uses comic book images to promote the new ABC animated shows Fantastic Four and Spider-Man. DC Comics advertises no less than nine TV shows for the 1967 season. On CBS Saturdays, you have the Superman Aquaman Hour with guest stars like Green Lantern, Flash, The Atom, Hawkman, The Justice League of America, and The Teen Titans. On Thursday night, tune into ABC to watch the live action Batman show, now with Batgirl. It's 1967, and they're on TV. Marvel superheroes, of course. Captain America, the Submariner, Iron Man, the Mighty Thor, and the Incredible Hulk. This is the third ad in which Marvel decided to use the theme 
of having their characters leap from out of a television screen. This is the last 1967 ad that I could find. It's also the fourth and final ad which has Marvel superheroes jumping out of a TV set. Starting off the 1968 season, this CBS ad dealt out more action, adventure, and fun with the Go Go Gophers at 8 a.m., the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner Hour at 8.30, followed by Wacky Races at 9.30, the Archie Show came on at 10 a.m., the Batman Superman Hour at 10.30, the Herculoids at 11.30, then Shazam at 12 noon, with Johnny Quest at 12.30, Moby Dick and the Mighty Mitor at 1 p.m., and wrapping up our morning is the Lone Ranger at 1.30. Superman, Batman, and Archie were all characters who got their start in comic books. And as a great decade in American history sees its last year with 1969, ABC sees a new Saturday morning lineup of shows. It all starts with the new Adventures of Casper the Friendly Ghost at 8 a.m., followed by the Smoky Bear Show at 8.30. The Chattanooga Cats come your way at 9 a.m. Next, Hot Wheels roar at you at 10 a.m. The Hardy Boys find clues at 10.30. And the Skyhawks are flying high at 11 a.m. The Adventures of Gulliver begin at 11.30, with Fantastic Voids starting at 12 noon. The Smoky Bear Show was based on a real-life rescue of a bear cub from a forest fire by National Forest Rangers who then adopted him as their official mascot. The Hot Wheels cartoon was based on the Mattel toy line of collectible cars. The show Fantastic Voyage was based on the now classic movie of the same name. The Chattanooga Cats would premiere episodes of Auto Cat and Motor Mouse, It's the Wolf, and around the world in 79 days. Not only did this three-page comic book TV ad give you a heads up on your favorite Saturday morning shows, it also let you join what may have been one of the first TV network clubs for kids. Just like in the previous ABC ad, CBS also began the 1969 Saturday morning season by dumping all but two of its superhero cartoons and keeping just one of its adventure shows. The comedy cartoons take over with great shows like The Jetsons at 8 a.m., The Bugs Bunny Roadrunner Hour at 8.30, followed by Dastardly and Muttley in their flying machines at 9.30. The Perils of Penelope Pitstop starring the Ant Hill Mob at 10 a.m. Ghost and Criminals Beware. Scooby-Doo Where Are You starts at 10.30. The Archie Comedy Hour featuring Sabrina the Teenage Witch at 11 a.m. The new musical comedy live action show, The Monkees, starts at 12 noon. The Wacky Races at 12.30, with Superman at 1 p.m. and Johnny Quest at 1.30. On CBS Sundays, watch Tom and Jerry at 9 a.m. and Batman at 9.30. The shows, Dastardly and Muttley, and the Perils of Penelope Pitstop were both spin-offs from the Wacky Races cartoon. The Archie Comedy Hour introduces the original Sabrina the Teenage Witch and her cat Salem. Was The Monkees the first live-action musical comedy adventure show for children? Here's another ad 
for the 1969 CBS weekend lineup of shows. This ad says the Batman Superman Hour was on Saturdays and the Aquaman show was on Sundays. However, no times were listed on this particular ad. In the last ad for 1969, Superman and Batman would help introduce to America a new show from the Children's Television Workshop and National Educational Television. The brand new show was called Sesame Street and it would air Monday through Friday for one hour a day. Well, that's all 17 TV comic book ads that I could find for the 1960s. Keep watching the JM Graphics channel on YouTube to catch our next video, TV comic book ads, the 1970s.